everyone. Welcome back to another New Beauty Talks. My name is Tatiana Bito. I'm the Aesthetic Content Manager for New Beauty. And today we're talking about breast surgery with no visible scars. And our expert joining us is New York plastic surgeon, Dr. William Lau. And he, we just wrote an article about this that's done really well on newbeauty.com if you want to check it out or check out Dr. Lau's Instagram page and you'll see examples of this. It's not really a scarless technique, but it's no visible scars. So let me patch him in so he can tell us more about this surgery and who is a good candidate for it. For joining. Should just be one moment. Hi, Dr. Lau, how are you? Hello, Tatiana, nice meeting you. Thanks for nice. having me. Nice to speak with you again. And like I said, we just wrote this great article that's been doing really well on newbeauty.com. So we thought it'd be a great idea to bring you on and talk about this technique. Yeah, great. Uh, well, thanks for having me again. Like Tatiana say, I'm Dr. William Lau. I'm based in New York City. Yeah. Nice to talk to everyone. So can you describe this technique for us for people who are not familiar, but it's the purpose is to not have a scar on the front. Um, that you can see, yeah. correct? So this technique, I guess, officially is called a transaxillary endoscopic breast augmentation. <laughs> but more in layman term, basically, we're putting through an implant through the armpit. And this is not a new technique, but it's something that's not as common in the United States. Because right. uh, it, this is actually the go-to technique in Asia or some other country because um, different race of people can scar worse. You know, usually darker skinned individual, the scar is more prominent, hypertrophic. So if you do the usual so-called IMF approach, which is the most common in the U.S., then you will see a very obvious scar right underneath your breast. So this right. technique will allow you to hide the scar in your armpit crease because we all have natural creases in our armpit. So we usually can just pick one of the crease and use that as an incision and put an implant through that way and then keep the incision in the crease. Yeah. If you want to see an example of where, how well the scar is hidden, go to Dr. Lau's Instagram page. You cannot even see it in the armpit. It's really remarkable. Yeah, I think usually um, when the scar really fades around six months to a one year time, it just looks like one of the crease. Right. So it really blends in very well. And then, you know, so, most people, they don't even see it. Yeah. And who is a good candidate for this approach? Are some people just, you can't do it? You know, what, what makes you a good candidate and who should avoid it? Yeah, I think almost all ladies who are seeking for a primary, meaning first breast augmentation is a good candidate. But if you have a certain condition, like your breast is very totic, meaning it's very droopy, then you probably yeah. have think about some kind of lifting procedure at the same time with augmentation. So those patients might, uh, might benefit from another approach because if we have to do a lift procedure, meaning we're gonna put some additional scar on your breast, then we yeah. can put the implant through the scar on your breast. Otherwise, I think most lady who's, who are seeking for a breast augmentation is a good candidate, especially someone who are very flat chested who is lacking uh, the natural sort of inferior fold where you can hide the scar very well. Those are yeah. patients are the best for this kind of technique. Yeah. So it's really for anyone seeking a volume boost. If you are, you know, someone who's a mommy makeover candidate or you've seen drooping, then it's an immediate no because you do have to lift the breasts. Yeah. And then also droopy depends on how severe your, your breast droop is. You know, if it's just a very minor droop, Usually a simple breast augmentation will fix the droopiness. But if it's a very severe droop, then you need to do a, a mass, something we call mastopexy or in layman terms, you know, breast lift procedure to at the same time. Otherwise, you will, right. if you just put an implant into a very droopy breast, it will look like a bigger droop, basically. <laughs> and uh, do you have any limitations on the size of the implant? It, it, like if you want to go really big yeah. for and yeah. you not go through it, the armpit? Yeah, that's a very good question. I never really tested my limits so far, but the smallest implant I've put in is one was 175. The biggest implant I ever put in through the armpit was 500 cc. Okay. So, 
that's a pretty big implant. Yeah. And so I'm assuming just logistically, you would have to fill after I mean, I guess that's most cases, but you're filling after you place the imp implant. Uh, the actually, we can put in silicone implant through the armpit. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. So you have, yeah. So the biggest, like I said, the biggest I ever put in was 500 cc yeah, silicone implant. The reason I the reason I'm so surprised is because I've seen your before and afters and I still can't see the scar in the armpit. Like I cannot see it at all. It's so well hidden. Yeah. So, uh, you know, because now we have something called a Cala funnel, which is like a, like a, you know, like a kitchen mayonnaise squeezer. So yeah. using that kind of a sheath device, we can put in very large implant, a silicone implant through the armpit. I still, like yesterday I saw a console, I still get, because not many surgeons, even in New York, are very familiar with this technique. So I have I saw a lady yesterday and she actually said she went to see another doctor and the doctor told her she, they can only put in saline implant through the armpit. Uh -huh. And I said, well, that's kind of not exactly true because I'm putting so many silicone implant through the armpit and then with a very, you know, well healed scar. So I think it, it's just, there's not so many surgeons who are very familiar with this technique. So they are not that well informed of what can be done. Yeah. So you, you are board certified in the United States and also in Asia, correct? Yeah. Yes. So you're doing a lot of this overseas and is right. this more common overseas than here? Yeah, this is actually, you know, in the United States, the so-called IMF, the inframemory incision is the sort of the go-to incision. That's because the one underneath. Underneath the breast that, because yeah. people, you know, a, a, a more paler skin tend to scar very well, so they don't care about that scar. But right. we're overseas, if you operate on African-American or Black patients or Asian patients or Hispanic patients, uh, the skin color is a little bit darker then the scar tend to have a little more hypertrophic or can be a keloid kind of scar. Then you try right. to avoid it on the breast, you know, because you, you have a very nice looking breast. You don't want to see that very big scar right underneath. Right? Yeah, so, so the, these yeah. are skin tones where it wouldn't, it wouldn't heal to like a white color or more yeah. flat. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so that then, makes sense. Right. So in Asia, actually, I think the most common and popular techniques is to go through the armpit, actually. Yeah. Right. Right. And and I I would imagine that you do thousands of these. So yeah. which is why we you're our expert. <laughs> yeah. On this topic. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then how do you work with your patient to choose the appropriate implant size? Cuz yeah, I so would imagine too like that's part a big part of the discussion is mm -hmm. what's going to look right on you. Right. So so that that's a very good question, you know, every patient kind of struggle with this problem, right? They, they kind of go back and forth what size they should choose. So, so in our clinic, we kind of use two methods to help them choose. First, I kind of ask them, you know, what cup they currently wear and then what cup do they want to be? So I have a rough idea what the starting point is. You know, usually in plastic surgery, we'll say maybe every cup increase is about like 150 to 200 cc, you know, plus minus, that's about one cup increase. But a cup idea is very, um, abstract right because as a lady you know when you go to a different bra shop or a different style bra you can yeah. wear it up right so it just gives us a rough idea so what we do in our clinic for more objective measurements we use a 3d vextra system so we scan their body which creates a 3d model and then on the model you can see if we click on 200 cc implant what it will look like on that body 300 cc what it will look like and then we give them the real sort of sample implant to put them on in a bra to see what it might look like in clothing. So I think between these two ways of helping them sizing, uh, most patients are pretty happy with their decision. But one common, not really complaint, but more of like little thing they often say to themselves afterwards, oh, I wish I've gone bigger. You know, a lot of yeah. people, yeah, more, I have more patients say, I wish I've gone bigger. I've never had a patient who says, Oh, I went too big, you know, because right. every, yeah, everyone's afraid of going too big. Actually, too big. yeah, right. but then so they choose one size under a little bit, but then afterwards they're like, oh, they're very happy, but they're just like, oh, I wish I've gone bigger, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about um, revision? So if someone has an implant that they want to replace, or can yeah. you still go in through the underarm if they had a different approach done the first time? Yeah. So. 
So you can always go through the armpit if you want to just replace an implant or like change the size or something. But I think if you have to do something what we call capsule lactomy is when patients, some patients develop a condition called capsule contracture, <laughs> meaning their breasts become very hard, they have a thick right. So then that probably, you, it's probably easier to do other approach to remove the whole capsule, like the traditional IMF approach or the, right. or the decision around the, uh, the nipple kind of approach to remove all the implant. But if it's just so for it removal or simply replacing an implant or changing implant, yeah, you can go through the armpit, no problem. Yeah. So it's a case by case basis. Yeah. Yes. And then if you notice that there's some concern, you may have to go in the original way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then what about for explant surgery? Because a lot of people are taking their implants out. Yeah. Is that something you would just go the original way or could you still do that through the armpit? Yeah. So, so explant, you can definitely remove almost every implant through the armpit. But the thing is, if they already have an incision in the past, like a scar somewhere, then I think it's probably the most smartest idea. Just go through the same scar so you don't have right. a new scar. A yeah, new so, one, right. Yeah, yeah. So if they already have a scar from before, I'll just use that scar. Yeah. And for, for trends, what are you seeing at your practice? Like you said, people want to go bigger, but they're, they're being more conservative. Yeah. Are you seeing a more conservative approach towards implants and breast surgery? What's the trend? Um, I think trend, trend wise is hard to say, but there's definitely some cultural difference between the East and West Coast. You know, the East right. Coast patients usually are a little more conservative. So they usually, the average size of implant East Coast patient would use is, uh, is smaller. Whereas compared to the West Coast, you know, West Coast patients tend to go bigger. You know, <laughs> influence or something like that you right know? yeah and then what is your um approach do you go over or under the muscle and what is the benefit of each yeah typically i go under the muscle always or do something we call dual plane and dual plane means the top half of your implant is covered by muscle the bottom half is covered by your breast gland tissue and that tend to give the most natural shape and also give you a less chance for capsule contracture, that condition we mentioned earlier. When you, you go put under the muscle, you said? Under the muscle. Yeah, under muscle has less chance of forming capsule contracture. It's been shown by multiple studies in our plastic surgery literature. Yeah. What is the aesthetic difference? Is there an aesthetic difference? Does it look different if you go over and under? I, I don't think there's much aesthetic difference at all. But when you go under the muscle, there could be something called animation deformity, meaning if you're like a, if you're like a bodybuilder, professional bodybuilder, and if you go under the muscle, and when you kind of squeeze your pec muscle, it can move the implant up and it can look a little unnatural. So it depends if you're an athlete or someone who has a very muscular build, then it will suggest you go above the muscle. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but most people, I think, when you go under muscle, give you a very natural and nice slope, a very gentle slope, because the muscle also give you that nice coverage, soft tissue coverage over the implant on the top. Yeah. And how long does recovery typically take, and how do you take care of the scar under your arm? Is it any different than taking care of the scars on your chest? Yeah, so that's a good question. Many people thought, oh, maybe this is a more difficult recovery position, but it's actually same as the other you know approach because because the patients have to understand like doesn't matter what incision you go into like the implant is going to end up at the same place you know the pocket is going right. to be in the same place so the recovery is the same really we are the same right. it's different position different location of the scar and then you, typically i use the absorbable suture so nothing needs to be removed. And then, you know, you would take care of this incision like how you can take care of any other incision with a scar gel or a scar cream or like a scar tape, you know, and yeah, yeah the same way. So someone needs to create a scar deodorant so you can just <laughs> do two in one. Sure, <laughs> right. sure. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Wonderful. Okay, so I think that covers everything. What is one thing you wish everybody knew um, who was considering breast surgery because really a lot of people don't talk about this approach. So I do think it yeah. is sort of novel that you're, you're bringing it up and, and talking about it. Yeah. I think I just wish uh, more people know about this technique, you know, cause I say for, as from a 
surgeon standpoint, I think this is a very unique and very elegant technique to do breast augmentation. But not many surgeons like to adopt it because it needs special equipment and also takes a little bit longer time than the usual IMF approach. And so, so that's why it's not as popular in the United States. But you know, for yeah. patients who are very mindful of scarring, or I think this is a very good approach. Yeah, I just wish more people know about it. And a yeah. lot of because some other surgeons don't <clears throat> do it, so the the patient go to the surgeon and ask about this technique. They usually try to talk them out of it or talk bad about this technique. But if you should, I think any patient should ask the surgeon, well, okay, you say this technique is bad, but how many have you done, you know? Right. They will tell you, I haven't done any. So if you, can't really, <laughs> you can't really criticize the technique that you've never done, you know? Yeah, so. Absolutely. And if you do, for anyone watching, if you want more information, that, like I said, we did work on a story. Um, it's this breast surgery technique promises no visible scars, so it's easy to find. And please go on Dr. Lau's Instagram page to look at his before and before and after cases they blow me away and i don't even need breast surgery but i would i would definitely have this approach just to avoid the scars so thank you for coming on and explaining it to us and it's always a pleasure thank you tanya thanks for having me thank you have a wonderful day everyone bye bye, -bye.